right, so we are on another season of the plant wall and the window box wall, as you could call it too. Um, but by the end of the season, you really barely even see the window boxes, and that's kind of why we painted them the same color as the exterior. So it would just blend, and it would just kind of look like the plants are floating in a way as they grow. Um, so what we did, I planted these, let's see, two days ago already. Um, so I started with the soil that we always love using, which is the Jolly Gardener Growing Mix. I love it. And then um, I always add in some Osmocote, which if you buy Osmocote, it has the directions right on the container. And we mix that in. It's a, it's a time-release fertilizer. It's perfect for container gardens. Um, it really kind of comes in to help you out if you get like a streak of rain. So if you're not able to fertilize and you have a week of rain, it's at least giving it some fertilizer during that time. So things don't get like really stressed or lime green or they're not blossoming and they just look rough. Um, that's a lot of times from them needing more nutrients. Um, so we're going to kind of just go through and I'm not going to name every variety, but I'm going to name some of my favorites up here that are really beautiful. And um, that's going to be these Vista Petunia. They're the paradise. They're so vibrant and hot colored. It's kind of like a tropical party in its own. So these are going to trail down a lot, but they also stay really bushy. So these ones I do pinch. And you can watch my pinching method, which will show as we go throughout the season two for maintain maintaining. Um, but with the Vista series, you don't always need to do a lot of that pinching because that's already naturally part of their habit is to stay nice and full and bushy. Um, they first started off with the bubblegum petunia, which is that light pink petunia. And then they kind of started veering into other colors and um, doubles and all of that. So um, the Vista Paradise is my one of my favorites. Um, it's actually one of my sister's favorites too. You'll see that all over her yard this year. Um, so we also put in a few different wave petunias. Wave petunias are very different than the super tunias. Wave petunias are more kind of flat on the top and just grow long. Um, they can be more full. It requires a lot of pinching and um, that does help it really nice kind of and when you pinch and things stay full it makes them more wind resistant because the wind isn't going to just blow and it's going to snap. It's kind of built in together as it as it's pinched and grows together. Um, so what we also have in here is uh, a lot of different coleus. I grew a lot of my own coleus this year and um, got a lot of them from my parents' greenhouse too. I, I like the large coleus and they carry a lot of the good ones. So this is one of my favorite, favorites, which is the French Quarters. It's always been one of my favorites. It's extremely full and aggressive. Um, so you do always want to pinch the French Quarters so that way you get a nice wide plant. It naturally grows wider, but the more you pinch it, the more it can stay more formed and not take over the whole box. So that's kind of, I kind of just cut it to shape it if it's taking over a variety. But we kind of placed it in an area where it's okay to because everything else is trailing except for this other little uh, coleus over here. And I forgot the name of that one. And then up here we got the variegated potato vine. Um, this is the honey petunia. I love this one, the super tunia. It's so pretty. It's got, you know, so many different colors within uh, the flower itself. So it starts out really like yellow and then kind of as it starts aging gets a little bit more orange and then pink. It's like it goes from like a sunny day to a sunset and that's what you get all in one plant. And then we have the margarita potato vine. This guy's been a little stunted because he had aphids. Um, on our bugs we always use Monterey. We uh, like to stay more organic so that way you know we're not killing off any bugs that actually help us in the garden so you always want to make sure to spray at the end of the day uh, when bees aren't present and that um, that way you're not hurting them because as soon as it dries the plant is okay. And then over here we just have a uh, morning glory and I don't know what color because I seeded all kinds and then I lost the tags and so everything's going to be a surprise with these. Uh, the morning glories are nice because they do they will trail down but then they will also kind of fill in and kind of come up and get real crazy. I like this wall to feel crazy like a jungle and really grown in and um, these really help capture that feeling. Um, it looks a little stressed because um, some of this is actually from pulling it apart from the other uh, siblings in the in the flat <laughs> so that can actually get cut off but 
Some of these leaves are stressed up top here because they were really bad with thrips. So what I do with that is I actually hose the leaves on top and underneath to kind of remove the thrips. And then we go and we give it just a little bit of the um, Monterey spray once those leaves are dry at the end of the day. And then let's see up here. Oh, I got a Scarlet Runner bean. So I'm really excited because they get like those really long purple uh, beans on them, but beautiful purple flowers. And then we have uh, the Skyline Salvia up at, up at the top. That's the orange Skyline. I love the Skyline Salvia. They're, they're just really great performers. They add a beautiful color, but the hummingbirds absolutely love them. So I like the Skyline. I also love, um, you'll see in a little bit, the Wendy's Wish. It's a fuchsia color, and I mean, that's just a hummingbird's dream. And then we have the trusty Rusty up here, and that one is the um, Coleus. And then I did kind of throw in, kind of threw in, <laughs> um, a Eucalyptus here. I didn't kind of, but I did throw one in. Um, we have so many Eucalyptus, so I'm just kind of stuffing them into certain areas to just kind of see whatever they do, you know? So it's, it's just fun to kind of have fun and test things out. I just heard a hummingbird. They have that zzz, like, their buzz their wings okay anyways so then we have some amaranthus in the back this is this is supposed to be love lies bleeding but it's already getting like little plume flowers on it so i don't know if that's because it's not going to perform like love lies bleeding because that's not what it is um or if it's because it was in such a small cell for so long that it's just now going into its maturity at a small level so that can happen as well all right <clears throat> Another morning glory. Let's see. I don't remember the name of this, but it's a double super tunia and it's absolutely gorgeous. Well, not a super tunia. It's just a, a, a trailing petunia. And this one here is the uh, margarita. You know that. Margaritas. And then this, these kind of mirror each other up on top. So we are adding the lime, the orange, and the bright colored paradise. Um... These two are actually very similar. They're just kind of, oh, well, they're not really flip-flopped either. They're just, they're the same. And then here we have uh, kind of the same as on that side. So that way you have some type of uniformity because you need that in order to make this, you know, I still like it to be wild and jungle-like, but there still needs to be um, same, like, like there's still some type of like a pattern with like specific colors and anchors in there to kind of, you know, give it shape and form and, and, and draw your eye to a design. So there's still like a design to it, even though it's going to get real crazy. Well, at least that's what I hope. All right, so this area over here was a lot prettier about a day ago because I wasn't treated at that point. Um, but I still wanted to share this with you because... Uh, the reason why you're seeing like white on the leaf is because I treated these with diatomaceous earth, which is a great tool to use in the garden when something else isn't, you know, stepping up. So diatomaceous earth is just a really like fine white powder, and um, I believe it's made out of fossils um, from the sea. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You can put it in the comments. Um, but anyways... When you sprinkle it on there, you can either sprinkle it on or they have like those. So I'm just going to go with calling it a powder sprayer, but it's like you put the powder in and you squeeze down and it poofs it out. Um, so that's kind of what we did with this here. And we got rain last night, so it left some white residue because I myself didn't wipe it off. So when you put it on the leaves or anywhere, um, it pretty much dries up that insect that you don't want on it. Um... So we had already used Monterey spray on the plants for the thrips, and the thrips just weren't being, like, taken care of. So we just went ahead and lightly, you know, uh, powdered that on here. And um, so far, I, I'm still seeing thrips. Um, <laughs> so it's like those are the hardest thing in the garden to get rid of. But, you know, if you do a few different, like, little steps and be patient, because when you're doing things organically, it's not going to get rid of something, like, immediately, like a really harsh pesticide would. Um, so you just have to be patient, try out different things to, to help it, and eventually you'll just see your plants growing out of it, because then the beneficial bugs will start coming in more. 
they're just starting to come in now. You know, I mean, we just had a really long winter. We had really cold weather. And we're just putting our plants out now that are they're now like, okay, let's go back to their garden and help them out. So um, once they're back, we don't have to do a bunch of this. That's the whole point of adding a lot of beneficial plants and um, like the beneficial bug attracting plants and pollinator plants and all of that stuff. That's the whole point is to create its own, you know, um, system to help help you out so that way you're not feeling alone and feeling like you have to constantly battle these bugs because you shouldn't really have to and you should also know that it's okay to see a few bad bugs because th that's like you serving food on a plate to your spouse right you know so the the thrips on a leaf it's like you serving food to the, the beneficial bugs like here come to my garden I got stuff for you to eat and then when they're there they're also crawling around and then they're also pollinating and um, so it's it's a really great cycle so don't be afraid if you still see a few it's okay um, it's just about eliminating the the mass amount of the population of the um, bad bugs so then that way it's not going to take over your plant and kill it and you can't even enjoy it for the year so anyways let's let's move on so I don't know if you guys remember, but like this whole set here was white, um, our couch, everything. And it really like always just struck my eye wrong. And <clears throat> I guess I could have done a fun col color, but I didn't really like have time to ponder the color of the couch. So I just went with black and I spray painted everything just a few days ago. And it actually came together really nice because about two months ago, I saw these cute little containers at the at-home store. And I'm like, I'll probably be able to use them somewhere. And sure enough, like they went perfect, like right on top of this of this table here. And this was like a, a brighter, like golden, light golden color. And it just like felt too bright once everything was kind of painted. So I lightly dusted it with the black spray paint and then anywhere it got too heavy, I scrubbed it with my foot to kind of make it look like a burnt knot in wood. And so that way it kind of just brought the tone down and matched everything more pleasantly. Um, so in this, one, in this one here, we have the irisine right here. I love it, so beautiful, hot, vibrant pink. And then we have the calliope geraniums, which are big, bloomy, multi-bloomy geraniums. Um, I know geraniums are such an old-fashioned thing to, to use, but what's old is new again, like always, even in the garden. And geraniums have really come out with... Um, really great new varieties that are more vigorous like the calliope variety is a very vigorous geranium very large leaf geranium big huge blooms beautiful bright vibrant new modern colors um, so it's it's one of those things that you just can't go wrong with um, bringing back into your garden and they last so long through the the heat the cool weather drought tolerant um, like I said you can't go wrong and then here we also have the portulaca, which is awesome because that's also drought tolerant. We kind of treat it a little bit like a succulent, but it will have multiple blooms going down the entire uh, plant here. And there's so many um, really pretty colors that I have in these containers. So once these start blossoming again, because um, the thrip will be under control then, um, that way I'll be able to show you that blossom because it's so, so pretty. Because um, with thrip too, they really hurt that blossom. They go into the blossoms to eat them. So if you're having a plant that is never blossoming, look closely and you'll see that you most likely will have thrips. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope I inspired you or taught you in some way. And if you don't already subscribe, please feel free to subscribe and click that thumbs up if you really enjoyed this video or if I helped you learn or helped you out with something or inspired whatever it is. Thank you. Have a good day.